What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. I have Anthony here with me today again. Do you want to say hi? What's up guys? And also we have a special guest. Um, some say he looks like Jeff Jones. And that his favourite phrase is, what about Europe? All we know <laughs> is that he is the former admin of the DBS Trading Group UK, Nathan Mills. Hi everyone. Hello, Nathan. So, uh, I think it's probably best to address the elephant in the room first. Um, why did you step down as admin? Well, um, there's a couple of things, really, but I, I, I think the main thing is just how much time it was taking up for me. Um, I mean, I'm, I know a couple of people know about it, but I'm sure a lot of you don't, but I just started a, a PGC um, literally the last week. Um, which is teacher training, um, if you don't know that already. Um, and that's taken up so much of my time already. And then when I get home after a, a 12, 13 hour day, um, I don't want to be trying to, to resolve situations in the trading group as well. Um, no matter how much I, I do want to help the community, really. Um, it, was, it was a difficult decision, but it's something where I have to think about my career. Um, over then the, the community at this moment in time yeah no that's that's definitely very understandable um but yeah 12 13 hour days that's what time do you get up yeah um it's my own fault um i didn't get them in liverpool um i applied to uni in manchester so it's my own fault for adding that extra all oh, right okay um hour and a half travel yeah well, I guess you'll be sorely missed. I, I, I don't know. I hope. <laughs> what do you think, well, Anthony? Um... <laughs> well, um, yeah, uh, I mean, I just want to thank you for the work that you've done. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I speak for most of the community when I say that. Um, most. Yeah. I, I don't want to <laughs> say all because I don't know. No, no. <laughs> no, I would. I definitely wouldn't say all. Oh. Um, I, I know I'm, I'm not everybody's favorite person, um, but I mean, I always tried to act in the the best interest of everybody um, while I was doing it. Yeah. So um, hopefully, hopefully the standards don't slip in the group, and uh, people still post their timestamps and their prices. <laughs> Good I can only hope. <laughs> yeah. Good foundations, hopefully. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, th thanks for that. And also, I wanted to talk about uh, this cube that you've done and that you ran recently at your locals. Uh, yeah, well, actually, um, after uni one day, um, went into Manchester locals to play it. Um, fanboy free. Um, couldn't get enough people at my locals, unfortunately, to play it. Um, a lot of people are still away at uni. Uh, for, well, they're not back for uni, um, so we're missing uh, one of the main people that come every week. Um, so it's it's been a while since my locals have actually fired. All right, okay, yeah. So I, I've got a picture up on uh, the screen now. I've just got your four dead boxes. So it's a four-player cube that you've made. Yeah, um, you can definitely make it for more people, um, but four is probably the minimum. I'd, I'd probably go to um it's 240 cards uh for four people uh I'd, I'd suggest it being 60 card main deck and five leaders for each extra person that you want to add to it uh yeah. it's got to be even though uh even do you want to just explain to the guys if they don't know what this is what what this cube is yeah um so like i said it's 240 cards um I've done it uh, 55 red, blue, yellow, green, and 20 black. The idea of it is you're able to draft cards out of the cube. So it's, it's the exact same as drafting, but you don't have to open the packs. And that usually costs about 20 pounds per person. So it can be quite expensive. So it's a draft that you can do over and over and over again. Um, every card is unique. So it's a one-off every time. Um, the idea is you you get a pack of 15 cards, you draft a card from it, uh, pass it clockwise until all the cards have run out, 
um, and then you repeat it for the next three packs. Um, there should be four packs per person, um, but you switch from clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. Uh, the idea is you then have a pile of 60 cards, which should probably be maybe one or two colours, and you make a 40 card deck out of it. Um, you play around Robin tournament with the other people that drafted. Um, it's it's really casual and it's it's just so much fun. Yeah, it's, it seems to be like a really good idea to get new players in, especially. Mm. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> I feel like Dragon Ball is a weird game to to get new players to play with a cube. I don't know. Like I thought of, I like doing cubes in pretty much every game. And Dragon Ball was the first one I was like, I can't be asked to test for this because black cards are the first hurdle I, I can see. It's definitely interesting, though, and I definitely want to play play one. be super interesting to play. Well, yeah, are, are you going up to Nottingham for the next... Um, next uh, for uh, what's it called? Random Player Guild tournament. Yeah. I should be. Yeah, I'll be going. I'll take my cube. We can have a game. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> Did you do much, much uh, testing to get your final card list? Oh, must have. Um, I, it's all theory, to be fair. Um, mm. The test, the testing will come. It's just I need people to, to test it with. Um, but my my main idea behind it was to make sure that every card was in a vacuum playable. So I didn't want many combo cards, like for example, the cell chain. Um, I didn't want to put the three levels of the cell chain in there because it if you got the five drop it'd be completely useless well not completely useless but pretty useless without the three drop and the seven drop yeah so every every card that i want to put in there in a vacuum is playable at least did you try and avoid using any particular cards um from, from my past experience of, of building drafts um I, I did it in uh, UVO before this. I, I really enjoyed the drafts where there was a really high power level. Um, I thought it was a lot more fun. So, for example, um, I'm, I'm sure a couple of listeners have played UVO, but in, in my UVO drafts, I had all the dragon rulers. Um, and <laughs> that was always fun uh, if you could get all four of the dragon rulers. So, no, I, I didn't put any limitations on it. Um, but, for example, uh, one of the leaders is Super Saiyan 3. And I feel from one play of the draft, it was very overpowered, and I might have to take it out after after one go of the draft. I can definitely imagine a couple of leaders that would be way too powerful to draft, and some that would be completely yeah, I mean, useless as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yes. even um, I. Yeah, Beerus is pretty useless. Really? No, I think Beerus is one of the. No, no, it'd be pretty good. Really? Yeah, Be- I. I I can see both sides of it, because, I mean, getting up to that amount of energy would be difficult. But you still kill something every turn when he attacks. Yeah, no, yeah, fair point. Yeah. Maybe something like you the Seven more... Freezer. Oh, yeah, you probably um, have to stay away from Freezer. Fiend Booster ones. Yeah. Yeah. That I was going to use that as one of the, the leaders, um, and add in more Universe 7 cards and just generically good ones. Um, but th- there wasn't enough. Um, to mm. to warrant it, so yeah, it's a difficult choice really. Um, and obviously people have their own their own take on it. So I mean, if somebody literally wanted to do a tournament power cube, um, I'm I'm sure that'd be possible. Maybe just one card, one of each card in the set. Yeah, yeah that'd be pretty good. Do a cube out of the theme booster. Yeah, that could definitely work. Yeah, you might have to up it from a, a one of each card, to maybe yeah. a two of each card. Um, I don't know how big the, the card pool is. Maybe uh, 104. It's, it's really low. It's, it's not quite... Mm. I think yeah. uh, World Tournament, actually, <laughs> as much as I hate that set, would be a pretty good set if you just wanted to draw from it. Yeah. Do you know, do you know how big the set is for the World Tournament, by any chance? Ooh, I can look. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that big. I think it's like maybe 60, 64 cards. No, I can't be sixty four cards. Well, according to the site, sixty four cards. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty bad. To be fair, if if you put um, four copies of each card into a cube. Yeah, actually, that's quite well. Right? Nice. That nice. worked quite well. 
And that's right. 64 including the secret. Oh, no, no. It's higher than 64. It's 68. 60, huh. 68, not including the secret, because you wouldn't put that in. Oh, I put four copies in. <laughs> of the secret. <laughs> so you just give everyone a secret at the beginning of the game. Yeah. But one person ends up with four of them, which they can't play. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like I like that idea. Let's let's just pick four of the secret in each one. <laughs> that sounds fun to me. And the only way you can win is by using him. And there's there's no way to win. <laughs> yeah. So um. Yeah. Good good luck with that. Hope you do find the people to test. And yeah, thank you. Hopefully you can refine your list, and uh, we can all copy it. I well, mean, um, I mean, I sent you, I sent you the entire the list of the cube and the pictures. Yes, um, yes, I have them. I, I put a couple of them on the yeah. screen so the viewers can oh, see. Okay. Uh, something. I, I'll, I'll do a Facebook post in a couple of days and on the the discussion uh, page and just give them out to everybody so they can see what I've. I just put it up on the well. trading group, right? No one's taking it down anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, people should still be taking stuff like that down, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so we're going to move on to uh, talking about the Bandai announcements. Uh, so the first one uh, would be the European BCC tournaments. So finally, uh, we're going to be getting some sort of support from Bandai, which is very encouraging. And uh, the, if I remember correctly, the shops need to sign up for this. Yes. So if you are watching... Uh, make sure you ask your local tournament organisers to actually go to the BCC site and sign up. Otherwise, you're not going to get these tournaments. Not until October, though. The application start in October. Oh, yes, yeah. <coughs> so uh, tournaments start from, oh, yeah, what was it? The 1st of December. Yep. December 1st and Jan to January 31st. Mm -hmm. which was Nathan you had a bit of rant about this didn't you I always have a rant about this I hate Americanisms um, but hey ho I'll, I'll let it slide <laughs> but yeah um, so what t two months pretty good Gets, um... it's hardly two months it's about a month like through Christmas are oh, you yeah, mostly going to play over Christmas week <laughs> We could all, I don't know, we could all go for Christmas Eve. If... <laughs> I, it's, it's given me flashbacks of um, a couple of months ago when they, they announced that they were going to be supporting us uh, with set free stuff. Um, when they were giving us out the, the tournament packs and stuff like that for, for set free. It felt like there was a space of time before that where there was absolutely no support um, and nothing was was going on in the UK, and then all of a sudden they, they said, "Oh, we're going to throw a lot of support at you all at once." Um, then that quickly dried up, and then it's probably been about two, three months since then, and we've not we've not had a, any kind of support whatsoever. Yeah, um, I I feel like they've been focusing a lot on Australia. Yeah, they want to get all the yeah. regions up to speed. Yeah, so I, I mean, I just at, at least we that, get something. Yeah, I mean, like last time, I hope we don't get the support and then it just kind of falls off again because that's what it felt like was happening last time. Uh, hopefully things will change when we're all caught up with North America and, yeah, they they can maybe roll stuff out um, just in parallel or... don't know, but, yeah, I mean, hopefully Bandai does the right thing and uh, we get more support uh, so yeah. we're going to get the championship pack uh, 2018 finally which I think is really great actually yeah, yeah. yeah I like the championship pack um, we're also getting the event pack as well which I don't know some of the guys managed to get them and they were trading these cards um, I don't think there's too much appetite for them though uh, well, there's Android 16. The rest of them are kind of... And this is me being an Android player. The rest of them are just kind of... Okay, they're not really played anymore. That's the problem. Yeah, I yeah. must say, but I don't think people want a Metallic 4 Marseille that badly. 
well, you already have a foil one, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We like, we haven't really had. A... Yeah, but now she gets some play. But we haven't really had a, an influx of players since um, Massing came out the first time. So it's not like we've got a lot of players sat around without their copies either. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh... I, I like the tab troll trunks. I think I think that's probably. In my mind, it's one of the best black cards. It's just other cards kind of slightly better in certain depth. Yeah. Sign Patrol's very all-rounded. Yeah. I think, I think the super combos are... like It's cool to reprint super combos in these gold special forms, but they're all the worst super combos. <laughs> Maybe Backbone's not that bad, and Android 16, again, if you play Androids. but I mean, Shagesh was the best super combo. Yeah, but then they made a card that said you can't play Shigeshi anymore. <laughs> so. People are moving to 2 and 2 Kai and Piccolo for their mm. blue super combos. So we're seeing a bit of play now. Yeah. yeah event yeah. Pack 1's not so bad. Uh, event Pack 2. <laughs> event Pack 2. Okay, so who wants to start on this one? I will. Oh, I'm putting my hand up, by the way. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> For starters, I'm very happy they pre reprinted Preface and Scrambling Assault. I like re them, the fact that they're reprinting Did cards. Did you say that, that on purpose? <laughs> well, Preface. If I, if I refer to it as Preface, no one will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe I should make that public service announcement. Preface of Recovery, not Preface. But I refer to it as Preface because that's what the Americans call it. <laughs> and I've had some Americans tear me down for calling it Preface. But two dash pack cards that only come in foil I don't know why they get reprinted three irrelevant cards and what I swear just got printed a month ago I I think the the choice of the cards it's a bit weird I, I'm not I'm not sure what they're going for because if they're going for printing out of print promo cards they've kind of half done that if they're going for competitive cards they've, they've half done that but it seems like they're using lists from two months, two months previously, rather than the most up-to-date lists. I just feel like they could have picked much better cards. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, obviously the Goten's good, but it, this is going to be in the same release window as Goten, right? So we're going to get the BCC Goten and this event pack at the same time. Yeah, but that's fine. Oh. Like the card's super expensive anyway. Yeah, sure. I mean, we've we've not even had the preface of Goku yet, so. I'm still waiting on that. Yeah, I think a lot of shops have just missed out on that completely. Yeah. But, like, they could have reprinted all the BCC promos. So, Gohan, uh, Bardock, and Mira. Yes, Bardock and Mira are terrible, but at least it makes some sense. Yeah. Also, if I wrote an interesting... in foil. Yeah. Interesting fact today. Did you know that Mira is the only, non, uh, only black card that's not in foil? <laughs> Which one? Just... A mirror, the absolute attack oh. mirror is the only black card that's not in foil. Huh. That is interesting. <laughs> like even the new Broly promo from the theater is in is foil. The artwork on that looks so nice, by the way. Completely unplayable, yeah. but it looks <laughs> nice. I mean I, I do like the Shenron artwork on the event pack twos so. though. Mm. So they're mm. ready to fight and the Kefla especially. Yeah, no, it is cool. Did they move the ready to fight over slightly, or is he always yeah, being off centered? No, no, he was no. sent. Yeah, he was centered before. That does that does look nice with him slightly off centered with Shenron in the background. I yeah. think they also made Goten a little smaller on the card. Yeah, I think they did. Yeah, they, I mean they have modified the art and it yeah. looks cool. Um, but yeah, I mean I've been seeing posts online saying you know they they could have reprinted set one set two staples like senzu bean or something like that because they're not those cards aren't coming back into print yep i feel like they might be waiting to reprint them in some sort of core set if they ever do rotation maybe yeah i wouldn't be too yeah i wouldn't be upset with that actually yeah and then obviously it'll be available in foil if, if it came in some sort of core set but I definitely think the promos are just weird choice. The ones that really get me are the dash pack cards. It's from your most recent set of dash packs. Why reprint two of them? 
Yeah. And it's not like it was like Kaba, for instance, that was played at four in every deck. These two cards are unplayable. People are yeah. playing Desperate Onslaught. Are they? Yeah, some like some. Yeah, but not as much as Kaba, for instance. Oh, of or course Rapid... not, no, no. So, my choice is what they should have... Five B promos, Rapid Onslaught, Zeno, and then you can have any random card you want as the last one. Like, imagine yeah. that, that Goku was a Rapid Onslaught, a uh, Super Saiyan Blue Goku. What? Like, be... With a Shenron in the background. Yeah, it'd be so much better. Well, uh, yeah. We should write to Bandai or something. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, this is what we get. And yeah. I I'm happy that we're getting something. And it's it's not great, but it's not terrible. Um, for, I mean, for us in the UK, a lot of people didn't get preface, so uh, that would be good for them. Cool. You want to move down <laughs> before I start ranting again? Yeah, let's let's move down to tournament pack four. Um, so I, I'm a bit uh, surprised that this is actually on the same page. So do you think you need to be signed up for the BCC tournaments in order to get TP4? No, I think, well, yeah, because your shop needs to be signed up anyway to get the packs. But... I think this is just part of the championship thing. Like, it's a cool participation prize. And we get tournament pack five as well, whatever that has. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, coming soon. So we don't know what that is yet, but nope. four and five at the same time. So they're catching us up with the tournament packs as well. Well, this tournament won't be until after the release of set for, uh, not set five. Of actually no yeah I think set five is out by then uh, by this time right um, set five is out uh, yes End it would November? be out set five is out on the twenty third I think of November yeah the last Friday so or would, something yeah would would that mean that the tournament pack four cards wouldn't be legal until that tournament no that would be five right yeah that would be set five set four is the end of this month so technically tournament pack four cards should be legal at the end of this month. Yeah, it should be. What was the date that they gave you? 28th of September. Something yes. Like that. Yeah, so that is the release date for Set 4 in the UK and Europe, uh, if you don't know. Because I don't think Bandai have updated the site. So as soon as the set becomes legal, does the corresponding tournament pack become legal as well? Not technically, but it should. Yeah, it's that's really... why I thought... Yeah, I, I didn't think it would. So I didn't think... Um, the tournament pack cards became legal until they were available to to win in an official tournament of some kind. I think the problem with the English meta is, like, in London, sometimes we get tournament packs and we're just like, cool, we have them so they're legal for us, kind of thing. So we usually do it as the second our locals start actually giving them out, then that's when they actually become legal. Or the second we yeah. get other locals and have them. I mean, you could and say then, that, that uh, you could argue that it's already legal because Bandai say September, but it makes mm. sense for for stuff to be legal when the shops get it or yeah. when they're able to get it. it. It causes a problem, not necessarily in London, because I know you guys don't travel, um, but almost everywhere else in the UK, if you're traveling to another store and then they've got <laughs> their own version of the ban list or, or playable list or whatever, um, you don't know what you're able to play until sometimes you get there on the day. Yeah, that's, um, and it, can that's... It, it can cause a bit of confusion. Um, and obviously, if you're paying £20 on a train, you get there and you can find out your deck's unplayable. It's it's a bit of a, mm. a kick in the teeth. Yeah, I think it's up to the TOs to actually um, announce on their event pages what is legal, rather than let the players decide. Well, hopefully this won't be a problem going forward uh, by this point because hopefully by the end of this year we should all be caught up everyone in the country at the same pace getting the same stuff at the same time hopefully 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 yeah I can only hope so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um so the last thing on this page uh actually no before that the top loader i'm so excited we're getting this top loader it's really nice <laughs> it's so nice does it fit in deck boxes? Probably not. <laughs> I don't know, because it doesn't have both edges like a regular top loader has. Yeah, so it might that's what in. I was thinking. 
Mm. Uh, not, not with me with my, my triple sleeve deck. Um, it's never going to fit in a, a deck ball. You're going to triple sleeve your leader into a top loader? No, I triple sleeve the rest of my deck. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've awesome. got to protect the uh, promo sleeves. All oh, right, yeah, of course. <laughs> And also, uh, coming soon, a large-scale tournament in the UK in 2019. I'm very intrigued guess... by this. Yeah, I guess those What About Europe's has finally paid off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they've been like, if we don't do this, Nathan's going to comment this on all of our posts. <laughs> I'm curious who... Well, uh... Sorry. I was going to say, I'm curious who uh, Bandai are going to get to run this tour, though. I mean, from... Yeah. Um... They should have a short list. Yeah. I uh, do Do Asmodee, do they, do they run tournaments? Do they have any experience of it at all? They I do think... run tournaments, yeah. but they're very temperamental and they'd rather not. I, I think they... Do they run card game tournaments? I don't know. I, they probably do some sort of tabletop gaming tournaments. Uh, they they outsource a lot of this stuff. Like card game tournaments for, in the UK, for the most part, are run by tournaments. Have we lost Anthony? What? Can you yeah. Hear? Yeah, you cut out a bit. Card game, oh. uh, card game tournaments in the UK. Uh, they're mostly run by tournament centers. So tournament center run Pokemon. They run. Uh, they help run Yu-Gi-Oh, Channel Fireball, and a couple. I can't remember who's Magic's one. I don't think it's Channel Fireball, Fireball are quite big. Yeah, yeah Channel but... Fireball are quite big in Magic, aren't they? So yeah, they they do Magic. Uh, obviously, Bushy Road run their own uh, one for Vanguard. So they they I, they, they get ARG to run it in the in the states, if I'm correct. I, I think so. they subsidize yeah. ARG tournaments as well. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like a company could probably get in and potentially. Get in with Bandai and say, "Hey, we want to run your tournaments." I don't think that would be the London Players Guild because <laughs> I don't think they have the scale; they don't have the manpower to run what yeah. Bandai would probably want. Yeah. Mm. As much as I believe it's Peter could probably do it. Yeah, unless Peter hires a like, lot of people. There's there's a lot to do with licensing and insurance, isn't there? And that's why you need a company yeah. in every country to be able to to run the tournaments for you. So obviously, Bandai are, are quite a large company, worldwide brand. Of they don't have the expertise to be able to know the ins and outs of the insurance in the UK um, and what liability they might have if if somebody a, a sign collapsed on them or something. That yeah, had a, it, it would definitely be it. easier for them to outsource it. Right, they would need a subsidiary oh. company uh, yeah. in order to buy insurance and have that company named on the policy. 100%. Like yeah. Nintendo, one of the biggest companies in the world, and they outsourced their tournaments. So I doubt Bandai would... Mm, they might, but I, I, they're going to have to outsource it to someone. It'd be curious to see who's running this tournament, though. Yeah, probably be a UK company because, uh, you know, Brexit and all that. Well, Darksphere have their new tournament store, so... Oh, it is very nice. It's probably the biggest store in London. Oh, well, definitely biggest store yeah, in London. Definitely the biggest, biggest store in the London. country? Um, I don't I'm not sure. How, how big's Fanboy? Hmm. Fanboy? Uh, I think it can hold close to 80-ish players downstairs, and then they've got extra seating upstairs. Okay. Uh, I think Dark's here from the new Megastore beats that. Yeah. It looks it looks like it would. Yeah. I, I, could, I could be wrong. It could hold so many more players, but I think probably around 80 comfortably without it being a, a sweaty mess. Yeah, I feel like most of the times I've been to Fanboy 3, which hasn't been for a couple of years, to be fair. They... They've moved stores. Oh, have they? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I actually might take a look at a new store. Did you want to just pop up to Manchester, Definitely. yeah? <laughs> no, I was, I was going to go on Facebook and <laughs> stalk <laughs> Dave Salesbury, but... <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I mean, ho hopefully 2019, um, it's sooner in the year rather than later. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, let's move on to the uh, set five black cards that were revealed this week. 
So we have the Black Marseille. Uh, burst three. When this card attacks, draw one card. This is the leader. Uh, untap to when you awaken. And activate main, burst three. So we get so mill three. Once per turn, choose up to one black battle card in an, uh, with an energy cost of three or more in your drop area and add it to your hand. This card gets 5,000 power for the duration of the turn. So, I mean, uh, so the burst three, this is kind of just like the regular Marseille skill. Instead of Marseille, okay. you, you milk, it just tells you to send three to drop. Um... What do you guys think? I, I don't think it's that great. It doesn't draw when you attack, which is... <laughs> oh, right, weird. yeah, of course. Yeah. And I I personally dislike leaders that switch energy. I, I can't stand them. I'd rather draw every single time. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. Well, there, you know, Hirudagan does pretty well with the Storm deck. That's different, though, because his <laughs> front side ability is draw two. Yeah, and it has a great super combo. Mm -hmm. So have, we'll... have you noticed that it um, awakens as well instead of which? Yes. So I, yeah, I guess everybody has a wish leader though in Shenron. Guess everyone will get one. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Uh, but yeah, let's let's move on. Uh, Adventurous Son <laughs> Goku. Uh, when this card attacks, choose one Dragon Ball card from your deck and place it in your drop area. Then shuffle your deck. If a if you place a Dragon Ball card in your drop area, this card gains 10k and double strike. To drop black yeah. card. It's right. Seems okay. It's yeah. good. I mean, it sets up your wish and also 20k double strike. If we ever get um, a shampoo like card that instead of giving it double strike, gives it critical uh, yeah, when you combo with it. That's just busted. That'd be amazing. Yeah. That card would be insane. It'd be played. It. Make it blue and I'll play it in every deck. <laughs> 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 so he, you can combo that and then champa as well on top of like, you know, that vanilla 30k two drop. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Now, now you're talking. <laughs> And uh, Dragon Ball Seeker Bomber, this was previously revealed, right? Yeah. Yeah, go down. Ah, uh, we have Kami. Who, who wants to take this well. one? <clears throat> I'll take it if... Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go for it. This is the card that I've been waiting for. This is a card that I absolutely love. Um. I don't know if you remember the, the Gohan leader from set one where it board wipes on the, the other side. I, I I really wanted to make that playable, um, but this does it but so much better. It just gives control players an ability to to kind of gain back momentum if they're behind. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's something that Antti and I were talking about this earlier, way before this was announced, that a board wipe is needed. Because the, I mean, your only way of dealing with a massive barrier board right now is Chain Attack Zeno. Yeah, definitely. And this is something I can be played in every deck. Um, it can't be bloodlusted, and it just seems really fair. Just it just seems fair. It's a three cost exactly, dark hole. It's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, you, you have to. It's powerful. I mean, any anything definitely. four or less is very powerful, but you pretty much have to give up a turn to play this so you have to choose when your timing very carefully and you know it adds an element of skill to it so that's good as well also the card yeah, testing creates fear in the game like the same way no one's really main and i should guess really anymore it'll yeah. be the same with this you can't have a board with you know 10 battle cards in it because you're just gonna get commied exactly but going going back to that, you you see an opportunity for, for example, people to play Shigesh because people aren't playing Kronoa. Yeah. Um, and I, I I feel like the opportunity will come up eventually where somebody just wins an event with with um, a Shigesh deck because people just aren't playing Kronoa. 
But then um, everyone will start again. playing Kanura again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. well, one of the things that I have noticed from doing uh, the deckless reports <laughs> from the States is that that in the top cut, about half of them still do play Kanura in the side. So you do get some people who do really well, and they just like, yeah, no Kanoa at all. And they can get away with it, but generally people are still playing Kanoa, in the side deck at least. Yeah, at least yeah. one or two copies. But you see it in Super Saiyan 3 decks, which, to me, adding extra black cards into your Super Saiyan 3 deck is not necessarily a good, that, good idea, because if you get it from the ability on the first turn, yep. it's just... It's awful. So the fact that Super Saiyan Free is doing so well suggests to me why people aren't playing Kronoa as, as much as they should. Because oh, imagine, if, that they can... imagine if you're playing Ginyu and your SS3 opponent charges to Kronoa. Oh. Your SS3 opponent concedes the game immediately and goes to game two. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of thing you tell your grandchildren about. <laughs> So, yeah, also, okay. the fact that Kami draws a card when you play it. Yeah. So you mentioned yeah. that. That's just it's a one drop as well. Yeah. It's, it's a boo. It's a better boo. It's boo of upside. It's a much better boo. Well, we were saying that about Krinoa as well, right? Like, it's just better boos. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's it's only three k, but you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna put me off playing it. <laughs> Um, so next we have Dende, uh, another big drop that they revealed. Um, so yeah, uh, again, auto draw one card, one cost black, activate main, two cost, place this card in your drop area. If your opponent places a card in their energy using a skill during this game, choose one of your opponent's energy and place it in the owner's drop area. I I don't know. I, I think this may be a little too powerful. Of Not course, really. it's a check to SS3. But it's... Yeah. I mean, I, I, I understand why it's needed. And I know in, in um, many card games, you get... In um you know, in Yugo, for example, they have their ban list and you get a lot of um, collateral damage. I, I feel that this... This card stops decks that, that play Objection. And Objection, is, is, I feel, is a very balanced card. Objection is definitely balanced, but it's so balanced that people don't really play it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So, I mean, like, you say it hits Objection decks, but, I mean, if you're playing an Objection deck, you're not playing an Objection deck to win, really. Mm. Um, it's... It, it's clearly designed to be a silver bullet for, for Super Saiyan 3. Yeah. Um, it's it's still not as much of a silver bullet as Kronoa was for Shigesh. So y you say it's it's overpowered. It's not as overpowered as, as Kronoa. No, no, it's not. But that that's that's me as a Ginyu player. Hey, <laughs> Kronoa. <laughs> like, if you don't draw this in the first three or four turns against SS3, then does it doesn't really do anything? Yeah, yeah. no, no. Yeah, yeah, like, you pay two mana to get rid of one of my mana so I can replace next turn. I mean, it does um, also need to be turn three, I guess. Yeah, oh yeah, and it has to be played turn three onwards. Unless you're playing SS... I feel like this is just going to cause SS3 mirrors to be complete. Ooh. Yeah, they're just going to be so crazy because people are going to start playing these on their second turn and then then you've got a problem, maybe? But yeah, but then, then it, again, it comes playing black cards in Super Saiyan 3. Yeah. You want to minimise that. So I think it's perfectly I fine. I don't know, now. I mean, so, so many good black cards are being released. Yeah, but you... Yeah, maybe... It's still not ideal, of course. Yeah, of course. But yeah, I mean, it's it's probably required for SS3. So, but yeah, as, as you said, yeah. when SS3 starts playing this, there may be issues. Is it something that you see bringing in from the side deck, or, or do you think that the Super Saiyan 3 is the main deck? It? Oh no, they side it. 
they signed it. But if the meta continues how it is in the States and everyone's just playing SS3, then all those SS3 players will main all side two of these and then... I mean, why wouldn't you maybe. just main it if all you're going to no, come you up against is SS3? Well, you don't want to main it because you don't want to play against a deck that isn't SS3 and get a black card. Sure. The thing is, though, even even rogue decks at the moment are SS3. Um, yeah. Margin Boo playing SS3 is the leader. Because yes. Maidens. It's just, it's just the best leader, yeah, playing <laughs> SS3. But maybe going into set five, we don't... SS3 might not be so prevalent. <clears throat> Sorry, I nearly uh, choked there. Uh, SS3 might not be so prevalent, so... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Hopefully. SS3 is just gone and no one plays this card and it's You can bad. play it in uh, Iron Val Trunks. Oh, God. More explosive <laughs> power of Vegeta. Oh, no, you can't do it anymore. You can't. <laughs> we'll, we'll get on to that one. <laughs> okay. All right, so, uh, moving on. Dark Power Black Marseillean. Uh, so, when you attack with this card... Uh, oh, did you hear Alexa just now? Yeah. Uh, when you attack with this card, you may add one card from your life to your hand, and if you do, this gains 10k power. And also, when your opponent plays a battle card with 15,000 15, or less, using a non-keyword skill, your opponent draws two card, uh, chooses two cards from their hand and places them in the drop area. So, this is the Silver Bullet to Chain Attack Zeno. Doesn't work against Chain Attack Zeno. Uh, what is, is Chain Attack not an auto? Well, no. So, uh, when it's played with non key skill, your opponent chooses two cards from their hand and places them in the drop area. But Oh, they can resolve point, it. Your Zeno will still come out. Yeah. And I believe I was reading two. Yeah, like, do you care then? It's, I think it's mainly designed as a counter to the, the free hands and stuff like that. The, the similar thing oh, yeah. cards from all the colors. They're, they're definitely gone. Mm. Yeah, I, I I don't know how gone they are. Um, I, is every deck gonna play this card? Again, no. no SS3 wouldn't play this card, but I mean th this I is think... a big check to those cards. But again, yeah. it's do you want to play it in any deck? Unless you're playing Marsen, who might want to play this, but will he play it over two oh. uh, Cabra and Trunks? I've got a really bad brew going on in my mind with um, <laughs> kind of Terra Mecha Freezer where you make them play cards and then discard two cards with this on the field. But only if their battle cards is... 15,000 or less. Oh yeah, but you get to select which cards you're making them play. Is it Clan of Terra Mecha Freezer? It's the... Uh, yeah, yeah. The promo one, the yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're mm. always going to get the effect off. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you, you look for the hand, pick a super combo, make them play it, make them discard two cards. Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, it's a bad brew, but it'll be will, funny. Will it work, though? That's that's one thing I'd have to look into, because it says when your opponent plays a battle card with 15,000 or more power, technically you made them play it. That's all so the wording, Yeah, the wording on uh, Clanter is um, they, they play the card still. Um, so, yeah. So, for example, if if they made me play a Kale, I still get the Kale effect to, to destroy the field. Oh no, but Kale says when this uh when you play this card. It's just on the entry effect, right? Like Oh no, no, actually, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so I think the word is the exact same. Your yeah. opponent plays that card in their battle. Oh god. That is <laughs> that's gonna be fun. Yellow black Marcin. Hmm. It's definitely something I've been thinking about. <laughs> um uh, you play you play yellow red with foreseeing hits as well, and the idea is you just kind of look at their hands, just rip it all out, and it, I think it'll be fun. You know what? Even better. Why not just play SS3? There we go. Dick's done. <laughs> SS3 yellow red. Yeah. <laughs> that deck was actually around for a little while. Like when people saw foreseeing hit, they were like, "Oh, cool, Clan of Terror foreseeing hit. I can just keep pulling cards out of hand." It never worked because you yeah. can't drop two of them on the same turn. But no, with my the, uh, the, pro the pro problem with SS3 though is uh, I'd have to play the four block cards. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it this is going to be the only black card you play? I mean, yeah, you, you've got, got the yeah. other ones as well. What about when you side in your Dendes and your Kami's? <laughs> Still needs a little work, okay? <laughs> We're getting there. 
Okay. Maybe a different leader. Maybe to set one Gohan that board wipes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next, uh, Dead Defender, that one's done. Temporal Rescue Trunks, that one's done. What? Did you skip Deadly Defenders and Goku? Have we not, did we not cover this already? No. Ah, oh, no, no, we've just talked about this a lot. <laughs> okay, Deadly Defender Son Goku. Uh, barrier and permanent during your opponent's turn if your leader card is black. And this card is in rest mode. Your opponent's cards cannot attack leader cards. And this card gets 5,000 less power. So essentially it's a uh, Vegito that costs one less. Well, and yeah. it's a bit weaker. And it's for black. It's... <laughs> and it's for black only, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all right. I mean, it's... It's yeah. I mean, you couldn't really play Vegeta in a Shenron deck, could you? Well, no, Vegeta can only no. play with a blue leader. So. Yeah. So, I think this is just more. They're 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 trying to push the Shenron leader. I feel. Yeah. It's it's a good card. Like if if someone said, "Hey, can I have your homework?" and I told them to change it a little bit, that's what you end up with. But... <laughs> yeah. I I think it's a it's a okay card. Like it's it's good. I think a black deck will play it. Marsan is probably playing this. You know, uh, what other black leaders are there? Uh, Demigra, I guess. All the other black leaders. So. Miro. Seno Trunks. Yeah, I mean it's, it's got Barrier as well. Barrier is always good. Yeah. Five K combo for free. Yeah, and it's standing just... upsides. It's just a very, it's a Saiyan. It can be searched with uh, Planet Vegeta. Yeah, so yeah. there's your yellow Marseille deck coming up again. I'm going to make this work. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the Trunks, the new super combo. Um, sparkling 5. So if you have 5 more in your drop area, when you combo with this card and your leader is black, draw one card. So standard super combo, except actually this has got a 0, 10k combo power. So you oh, could... Oh, I didn't know it's that. You could, uh, <laughs> you could splash this in anything really, just for a 0, 10k. Yeah, his power is also 10k rather than 12, which yeah. is a bit unfortunate. I used to... Does, um, it, does it make a difference? It's like... Yeah, I used to like trolling where you, you you summon the 12k, attack with it and pump it by 5k over a 15k leader to win. You can still do that with this. Eh, it's not as funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, this is, this is really interesting, having the 0 10k. The thing is, I, th I thought about it like that and I was like, oh, you could splash this. Which means I can't play you you've gone again. Yeah, you, I think every time you get too excited, your line breaks. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it, it's just it's got super combo in it, so it's still very. It's just balanced. Yeah, I mean it's 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 something different. Um, so, I mean, you know what? You could play this if you're under um, foo. Yeah, that is one of benefit. Yeah. Of it. yeah. So yeah, I think I I would prefer this. Although you know, sparkling five, five or more in your drop. So something like Marseille, and if you're overwhelming a lot, it might not always be live for the draw. Yeah, then you're just probably playing. Uh, what's it called? I actually remember what it's called. <laughs> uh, the Supreme Guy. Five time. Yeah. Yeah. And okay, so. Power Burst. Uh, this is the Black Negate. And negate the attack. Choose up to one black card from your drop or warp with an energy cost of one and add it to your hand. So we've got all the, the Kami's, the Dende's and the uh, other Marsoon. Uh, sparkling 5. You can activate this card's counter from your hand by adding a card from your life to your hand instead of paying its energy cost. This is this is Just great like again the... for my own. Yeah, definitely. It's a bit like the instant transmission card from from set four, is it? Yeah. Um, well, black needed a good negate. 
Oh yeah, yeah, because time's judgment is just. Bleh. <laughs> hey, who doesn't like recycling one card for two cards? I actually did that once at a recent tournament, but I still lost because I had to drop two cards for it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next one? But yeah, that's, that's good. Next one, we have Dragon Radar. Uh, look at top seven and choose two Dragon Ball or Desire cards and add them to your hand. Or choose up to two Dragon Ball or Desire cards from your drop and add them to your hand. It's just four up start goblins. Yeah. yeah. I will never use the first effect of... Like... I just feel like you just use the second effect and then add your back and then play. Play and draw. Yeah. yeah, just just keep up recycling the upstart goblins. I mean, everyone's probably going to play seven of them. Um, yeah. Hmm. Draw more, win more. Yeah. Deck thinning is deck winning. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> I just... I just worship my picture of Patrick Hoban every night. Uh, <laughs> the best. Uh, Dragon Ball, and then we've got a Child's Wish. So this is the first Desire card that's been revealed. This card gains Desire in all areas. Uh, you'll lead if I guess if your leader card is Shenron. Uh, choose one yeah, battle I, I... card. Yeah, uh, choose one of battle card in your drop area with 15k or less. And an energy cost for three or less, and play it. It's a good mm. card. Um, ish. It's a two cost, and you get you get a three cost out of it. It it depends if that card has gotten into the battlefield ability or not. Um, if you if you bring if you monster reborning something that's got a really good ability when it comes into play. Um, it's. I think it's good. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, I mean, we we expected the desire cards to be really busted, and yeah, this this is pretty balanced. Yeah, it's not as busted as you'd hope it to be. Um, but it's it's good. It's it's not bad. But they do need to work on the wording because, like, as you were reading over it, your leader card is a Shenron card. Yeah. It, I think all that's doing. I think what the first part's meant to be is like activate main, your leader card is a Shenron like the activation condition it's still worded really Is actually is that is that an activation condition or is that an effect? Does no, it make your leader into a Shenron card? No, it's an activation yeah. condition e Either way, either way it's bad Yeah, no it is I Yeah, because the first time I read it, I, I read it as if it was adding the, the attribute of a Shenron to, to your card, so then you could play the, um, like, for example, the Dragon Ball cards. Um, but obviously, I don't think they're meant to word it like that. Yeah, that, that would be too uh, too complicated. Also, Dragon Ball does yeah. the same thing, so you'd just be able to play seven Dragon Ball in every deck. And... Oh, yeah. Exactly. This is free. <laughs> Please fix your cards, Bandai. <laughs> Oh no, you can't play Dragon Balls unless it's free. You'd lose. Because <laughs> uh, oh, Dra 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 Dragon Ball has the wording, right? It says, if your leader card is Shenron. Um, but then a child's wish says, your leader card is a Shenron. Yeah, it just seems like they just missed if. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They clearly did. They've start but then they've started it with a capital for your... Uh, never mind. Uh, that's true, it. it's weird. But then I also throw out there that I don't want to characters. I didn't hear a word of that. I did not either. They spelt one of their main characters' names wrong. Sorbe. Yeah. 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 That's all that. If you uh, if you ever want to give yourself a headache, read Times Ring. Is it Times Ring? Oh my God! Yes, Times Ring. <laughs> <sighs> let's. I just want to Google to Translate for that. I think. <laughs> okay, let's move on to World Peace. <laughs> Um, again, uh, Desire, again, your leader card is a Shenron card. Choose one battle card in your drop area with an energy cost uh, less than or equal to your current energy and play it. 
So similar to uh, Child's Wish, but this is a four cost, and uh, there's no energy requirement on what you are playing. Yeah, um, again, I, I think it's a good card. I don't know if that's my Yu-Gi-Oh brain coming into it, but Monster Reborn's always I think good. I mean, there was, what, in set three, there was a Rebirth of Justice, the four drop, you can play a five drop blue. I know what played yeah. that. Yeah, but this one's got the added ability of it always being a desire card, and it's got some sort of synergy. Yeah, you can search it, yeah. I don't think you'll ever hard cast this card. Uh, well, mm. you have to. It's an extra card. Well, no. Uh, you'll use your leader's skill oh, to right, play the okay, yeah, card each sure. turn. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not bad. It's I mean, not. It, it's not. It basically unplayable. means your Shenron gets a reborn each turn. Yes. Yeah. Which is it was pretty good if you're playing like chain attack. Yeah. Get another card out your hand. Or if bad. you have seven mana, just drop Zeno. Yeah, eight. Oh, yeah, seven, it works. Yeah. Just top decking this. And just chucking it down. Draw five. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, so, yeah, those are the uh, black cards that have been released so far. Set comes out 23rd of November, and uh, I, I guess they'll probably release more this week at some point. Hopefully so. Yeah, we'll move on to the secret that was revealed for World Tournament. Uh, Sun Goku. It's a, another Goku secret rare. And Oob. Seeds of the Future. 8 cost, blue, 3... Uh, Three specified cost. Double strike, dual attack, ultimate. If your leader card is well tournament, and if there are six or more uh, in both your and your opponent's energy area, decrease this card's energy cost in your hand by two. <coughs> and when this card attacks, choose one up to one of each card from your opponent's life and energy areas and place them at the bottom of their owner's deck. Um... So yeah, this is going to um, be an 8 cost unless you're playing, I guess, Announcer is the only really playable one. Yeah, I mean... And you have to get to 6. If you've got it on the field, it looks really fun to be able to swing at your opponent with, um, but the, the hard part's probably getting it onto the field. Yeah. I uh, mean, if you get it on the field and you swing at your opponent... Um, yeah. You're probably winning. I mean, I will get Mephubad, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you just tap to all, all eight energy and you can't bad ring it. Um, I, I I think with the, the secret res, I think they should all just be unplayable. Like, I don't think they should be playable whatsoever. I think they should just be collected items. Yeah, um, I think so. I, I think this is a good secret. Yeah, I, I yeah, it, it, it looks good. If you get it off, it's going to be really cool. Um, but I think if you go back to Tournament of Power, just how overpowered that Secret Rare is and how much it costs, I don't think it's good for the game. No, I, I agree with that. By far, that is the most expensive card. Exactly. And that's just because of its playability. If every secret rare had that level of playability, this game would be so expensive to play. Saying that, everyone in the UK has it, apart from me, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've played against so I've many, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, the problem with it is it also, uh, it also comes from to uh, not, yeah, Tournament of Power, which in and of itself wasn't a good set to buy loads of. So there aren't loads of them just floating around. Like, the amount of Vegitos that are floating around is... I like the Vegito artwork. I would like to pick one up, but... I, I also think it's a good card as well. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's not that playable. And I think, yeah, as Nathan said, uh, Secret Rares should be, I guess, slightly gimmicky. They should be powerful, but, you know, hard to pull off. 
Yeah, gimmicky yeah. is the thing. They should all be gimmicky. Like, Demigra yeah. is probably the strongest... I'd argue Demigra is the strongest secret rare just, just in general. But it's still very gimmicky. If you ever drop it again, yeah. it's like in the game automatically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, just in, in my mind, that every secret rare should be somewhere between 40 to 60 pounds. Yeah. Um, and just yeah. having nice artwork and being gimmicky is probably the best way to do that. Um, and this ticks those boxes for me. I think it's a good secret rare. I mean, I, I'm sure that's how Bandai intended them as well, but. You know, sometimes they mess yeah. up with their cards. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Very, very occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, to be fair, there are a lot of cards out there. And, you know, the proportion of problem cards isn't that. You know, it's not It's not that great compared like to... Like one per set. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's not too bad, yeah, right? Uh, no, it's not that bad. Uh, and uh, moving on, finally, uh, we've had a new Q&A for Force Ejection Marseille. Uh, basically, uh, it doesn't make sense to me, but the card checks the energy when you ch charge energy in your charge phase. Uh, basically, this means you can't play the Vegeta uh, energy lock deck anymore. But yeah, yeah it, it just uh... doesn't make sense. I I can see both sides of the argument to, to the way it should be ruled and the way it should play out. Um, but because they've given us a definitive answer, um, we've just got to go along with what they've said, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Bandai, why is it like this? Because Bandai said so. To be fair, I yeah. think it was an unintended interaction and then they just nipped it in the bud. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's extremely yeah. oppressive what the Vegeta lock deck was doing. Yeah. E even though yeah. it was, you know, it was only against a deck that other people hated a lot, but... It is intrinsically oppressive. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's like it's like fighting fire with fire, really, isn't it? But one's doing it a legal way and the other one's not. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, I think uh that's all we're gonna cover today. Um any last comments from you guys? Well no. uh, we get draft box promos next week, that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We'll cover those next yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> Can't remember those. Okay. Great. Uh so I think we're gonna pretty much end that around here uh, Nathan do you have any shout outs as this is your first time on the channel uh, no I, I don't think so I mean obviously my, my locals just play games uh, forever and Liverpool come down um, same for I feel like my other home uh, Manchester fanboy free um, best place to play Dragon Ball in the northwest um, probably yeah yeah probably Make sure you have set four, though, if you show up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um... Red by Androids. <laughs> but, yeah, thanks, uh, Anthony, and thanks, Nathan, for coming on. And thank you guys for yeah. watching. Uh, I hope you have stayed with us for just over an hour. This is... Uh, so, uh, get me those view hours. Uh, <laughs> thanks for all your support if you like this please leave a like and remember to sub for more content i will see you guys next time <laughs>